Esther's story takes place during the years of the Jewish exile, around 470 BC. Now the Jews had been defeated by Babylon, which meant they were exiled from their homeland and taken as slaves. But later, the Babylonians were defeated by the Persians. So now, the Jews found themselves under the rule of the Persian king, Xerxes. That's where our story begins. King Xerxes decided he was going to throw a party. And this wasn't your standard cookies and punch type of party. This party lasted for seven days and included all manner of lavish feasting and drinking. Now on the last day, the king decided to show off his queen, who was very beautiful. But when he called for her to come to the feast, she refused. This greatly angered the king. And not only the king, but his counselors and noblemen as well. Because they were thinking, if the queen treats the king this way, wives everywhere are going to start disrespecting their husbands. They're going to be mouthing off, refusing to change the baby, they're not going to cook the falafel for dinner, it's going to be chaos. So the king declared that the queen was no longer the queen, which meant that he needed to find a new one. Now, if you're an all-powerful male in the ancient world, what better way to find a new wife than to parade every beautiful single woman in the land through your palace? So that's what he did. Among the hundreds of women sent to the palace was a girl named Esther. Esther was secretly a Jew, and she was also an orphan raised by her uncle Mordecai. And though she was essentially the lowest possible social class, the Lord was with Esther, and she was a beautiful and graceful woman. When she was brought to the palace, she found favor among all the king's staff, and ultimately the king himself, who chose her to be queen. Some time later, Esther's uncle Mordecai was sitting at the city gate when he overheard two men plotting to kill the king. Mordecai quickly relayed this to Esther, who told the king, who promptly solved the problem. Even though he saved the king's life, Mordecai was never recognized for what he did. And some time later, he found himself in trouble when a man named Haman rose to power. Haman was the king's second in command, and whenever Haman walked through the streets, everyone was ordered to bow down before him. But Mordecai, being a Jew and a follower of God, refused to bow to Haman. When Haman found out about it, he was enraged. In fact, he was so enraged that he plotted to kill not only Mordecai, but every single Jew in the empire, women and children included. By Haman's influence, the king sent out a decree that ordered all Jews to be executed and their property taken. When Mordecai found out about it, he begged Esther to approach the king and ask him to change his mind. But Esther knew that if she were to approach the king without being summoned, she could, by law, be put to death. Esther was in torment, but finally, after much fasting and praying, she decided to approach the king, even if she should perish. When the king saw her standing before him, he loved her and invited her to speak. What do you wish, Esther? the king asked. Esther replied, I would ask that the king and Haman come to a feast that I shall prepare. The king was delighted, as was Haman, and together they feasted. Toward the end of the meal, the king asked Esther, What is it that you wish? Anything you want will be granted to you, up to half my kingdom. Esther replied, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come to another feast that I will prepare, and there I will answer the king's question. Haman left the palace happy that day. But on his way home, he noticed Mordecai at the gate and was reminded of Mordecai's refusal to bow to him. Haman's mood darkened. He decided to have a gallows built on which Mordecai would be hanged the following day. That night, the king couldn't sleep. So he ordered the book of records to be brought and read to him. When the account of Mordecai's warning of the plot to kill the king was read, the king asked, what have we done to honor Mordecai for saving my life? Nothing, your majesty, replied his servant. So the king called for Haman, and when he arrived, the king asked, What should I do for someone I want to honor? Haman thought he was thinking of him, and he said, 
you should put your royal robes on him, and a crown, and let him ride your horse through the streets so that everyone will know that this is the man the king honors. The king thought that was a great idea, and he said, perfect, go and get Mordecai and do exactly what you have just said. In fact, you can be the one to lead the horse around. Soon after this, the day of Queen Esther's feast arrived. After they had finished eating, the king again asked Esther, what is it that you wish? Anything you want will be granted to you, up to half my kingdom. Esther replied, O oh, king, if it please you, all I ask is that my life and the life of my people be spared. For I am a Jew, and it has been decreed that all Jews in the empire should be annihilated. When he heard this, the king was furious. Who would do such a thing to my queen? He shouted. Haman, replied Esther. And furthermore, he has built a gallows to hang Mordecai, who once saved the king's life. The king replied, Then let Haman be hanged on it. And so it was. Haman was executed on the gallows. And a new decree was issued, saving the lives of the Jews. Esther and Mordecai were honored and spent the rest of their days serving the king.